Okay, you should be live. Hi, everybody. It's Lori at Cut and Paste Craft Studio. I'm so glad you're joining us for our very last um, uh, canvas painting class. Yeah, one <laughs> <laughs> Melissa's going to aim the camera at me so I can actually talk to you all. Uh, this is our last canvas painting class for this series. Uh, we'll be adding more throughout the summer. We'll be doing some really cool canvas painting in our virtual summer camps. Um, keep an eye out for things. I'll let you know when new designs come up. Mr. Henry's working hard on one. I know one of them's going to have a cactus. Um, we're also going to do a jellyfish canvas in one of our camps. Um, so thanks so much for joining us today. We're using a webcam today and our laptop, so hopefully we'll have fewer glitches than we do when we try to do this on my phone. Um, thanks so much again for joining us. If this is your first time painting with us, um, you need your bowl of water, you need the paints that came in the sloth kit, and you need your three brushes. You've got your big brush for wide areas, your medium one for getting in the smaller nooks, and then your little point brush, which is great for doing little tiny detail work. So we're just going to jump right in and get started. Um, we're going to do our background first on this sloth. Now, um, this color uh, will cover up some of the lines and it's harder to paint over, so we're not going to paint over all the lines that you have. Um, you're going to start with color number one, which is this sort of minty green. It's called Soft Jade. Um, and you're just going to start painting in the big open areas. Don't paint over the leaves or the sloth or the tree. Will you um, pause and pull the, uh, just hold up the canvas closer to the screen for a second and kind of point because some of those lines are hard to see farther. Right. Away. We're going to be doing in here, up in this area, in between all these vines, and all in this area. So we're going to start by painting our background just like usual, but this time we want to be careful not to paint over any of the lines because this paint is very thick and it'll hide those lines. All right, so you can kind of, you know, paint your wide open spaces. Color one. With color one. Uh, soft jade is the color. And then, you know, using the big brush, get a good bit of coverage on things. And then we'll go back and pick up our smaller brush to get into the smaller areas. I like to kind of do some of the wide open ones and then come back a little bit. Um, remember that you can use this flat edge of your brush with just a small amount of paint to go right up to your line, like the line where the arm is, and then pull away. Remember to spread your paint out. You want it nice and thin. And what do I always say? Turn your canvas if it gets awkward for you. All right. I got a little too much there. All right, now right away, I'm going to need to turn my canvas because I want to get this straight line right along the tree. And I've got a little spot there where I already went over. That's okay. The brown will cover it up. Um, I got to painting just a little bit too fast. You're just doing all the background colors. This is a tree here to the side, and you don't want him with the green paint on it. Now, as we always do, if, you know, you paint this background and you feel like it needs a little bit of a second coat, don't worry about it right now. That's a good thing to do at the very end when we're off camera. That way you aren't spending a whole lot of time doing it. Also, you may, might find that when you're done, you just really don't need to add a little extra to it. So I've got this little area in here. Now this is where I think I want to change to, I'm going to spread that out a little bit. I had some clumps. Um, I'm going to put my brush away in the water for right now, and I'm going to pull out my smaller brush. Just a little dab on the end, and then remember, brace your wrist whenever you're doing detail work, and just draw right along that line. Sometimes I try to get going too fast, because I'm like, woo, I can go really quick. Um, but when I 
paint too quickly, I tend to go way over the lines. So I'm trying to go super slow here. Remember your Q-tips are your friend. <laughs> if you're worried about, you know, hitting and um, ending up over the line, you can use that Q-tip, dip it in just a little bit of water and swipe it out. And then get all the way up on there. All right. I'm kind of liking that. Um, now, while I've got paint on this little tiny brush, um, I'm going to show you, you this leaf area right here. There's some little spots in between the leaves that we need to paint. And because I've already got my tiny brush going, let's see if I can hold that up just a little bit. Melissa, can we see this area if I got it up high enough? Yeah, oh, okay. uh, it's fine below too. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oops, sorry if that was a little jolty. I just zoomed us in a little bit. <laughs> While I'm painting, um, I know some of you all may be watching this later, but um, starting next Tuesday, we'll be closed on Memorial Day. That's Monday. But starting next Tuesday, we will be open for people to walk in, pick out a craft, and take it back home. We're not open for people to come in and sit down yet, um, but we will be open. I'm going to go under his armpit right now by these leaves. So if you feel like ordering online is tough because you can't see what everything looks like, you can walk in. We're going to take one family at a time. We would really appreciate it if you guys could wear masks to keep us safe, and we will wear masks and gloves to keep you safe. Um, and then we'll walk you through. We're going to ask everybody to keep their hands in their pockets um, and not touch anything. Um, I'm going to switch to a little bit bigger brush because this I'm going to go with my medium one now. Remember, when you load up a brush, only load it up about a third of the way. Uh, if you load it all the way up to here, first, it's difficult to get your paint out. But secondly, that's way more paint than you need. And you've learned by now, I think a lot of you have been painting with me for a while, people like Isla and Beatrice and Emily and Nat and Nora, you guys have been here long enough that you really know a lot of these techniques. All right, I'm liking the way this looks. I see a clump there, I'm going to spread him out. All right, uh, let's see, I got down in there. I'm going to um, switch gears a little bit and um, change my angle so that I can get in around um, the vines. Now, I think you could probably paint over these vines, but I think it would then be difficult to see your lines. So if you don't care, if you think, well, I can just put my vines wherever I want, then you don't have to take the time to paint this carefully. You could just paint right over them, but I'm going to take my time so that I can still see where those were. I have a little too much paint on my brush. Remember, you can always wipe that off. Right now, I'm painting the areas between. Um, this is actually a branch. We're going to paint that brown later. And then these uh, swoopy things are um, vines. But this sloth could just go swinging on if he wanted to. I don't know if any of you all saw the video on Facebook or on YouTube, but they showed um, some zookeepers taking a sloth around to see the other animals at the zoo. And that sloth was just hanging from a branch. He was not going anywhere. And they took him around, and he got to see all the different things. Apparently, those animals miss seeing us as much as we miss seeing them. And they took that sloth to the dolphin enclosure. You know how they have glass where you can see the dolphins through it? And the dolphins went nuts. They thought that sloth was so interesting. In fact, one of the dolphins hung upside down in the water so that he could see that sloth better. It was so clear he understood the sloth was upside down. I thought that was really neat. Go look for that somewhere if you haven't seen it yet. Ooh, now I have a big spot here. 
When you've got a big open space, you can put a little more paint on your brush. But remember to slow down when you get to the edges. And you can paint the sides of your canvas if you want to. All right, this little triangle here is a little, I have to go a little more carefully here. I'm curious what everyone's going to name their sloth. I don't know if there are traditional sloth names. All right, I'm going to have to turn him back so that I can reach in there. edge of your brush up to the line and pull away. Now when I turn, the light shone a little differently on there so I can see that I have some clumps that need brushing out. So I dried off my brush on my paper towel and I'm going to go back up here and smooth out those areas where I just got too much paint. There we go. Alright, what else do we need to do? We've got to do this side over here. So I'm going to flip up so I can, you know what, I'm going to go all the way upside down. You all turn however you need to turn. I'm taking my brush right up to the edge to get that nice line. But then I realize that upper corner there, I'm going to have to use my little brush. But we'll just finish up what we need. Background's never as much fun to paint as everything else, but once we get this out of the way, we'll get to do all that nice little detail work. That's really fun. You can tell I'm kind of avoiding the areas that need the little tiny brush. I'm just painting my big wide open spaces. You all tell Melissa if we get going too fast. Try to very carefully use my brush to draw this line going sideways here. That's when you need to be really slow and careful. All right, I'm gonna um, think I'm gonna get my little brush out now and fill in these teeny tiny spots. Now remember, just when you've got a spot this little. Use the very tip of your brush. You don't want to squash it down. You're just using the very edge. There we go. And then let's go, I think that's his knee. And in between his little claws there. And then spread that out. There we go. And while we're here with our tiny brush, let's get in here. This is the area, I'll turn it right side up so you can see. Um, this is the area under his, um, kind of between his knee and his belly and his armpit. There we go. All right, we just have these three spots left to fill in. Again, I'm going to have to flip him upside down so I can reach him. This is a pretty big open space, so I'll switch back to my medium brush. Remember, always dry these off really well. Even if it's the same color, um, you'll be able to tell pretty quickly if you use a brush that's too wet because you'll put the paint on there and it'll seem very runny.
I'm going to brace my wrist here a little bit, get my edge. Blue. And I'll just get that little corner there. You use your tiny brush if you need to to get in that corner. Thank you. And then I think I'm going to turn him sideways so that I can get this is the area between the bottom of the branch and the big leaf right there. Ooh, I got a little too much paint. Spread him out. And then this last little area in here, I'm going to save the tiny little places. Goodness, can you hear that noise? Someone is walking on my roof. All right, back to my tiny brush for my little tiny areas here. Get into that area with the point. Right. I have my background painted. How about you all? If you see any spots where the paint needs a little, you know, sometimes when you're doing really close up uh, detail work with your smaller brush, it leaves more brush strokes. So when you get time, maybe at the end, you might want to come along and just Smooth out your brush strokes in some of those areas. This is a good time for you guys to take a break. If you're um, watching us on YouTube later on, it's a good time to pause the video and go take a little break and blow dry your project. How are we doing? We're good. No All comments right. yet. No comments. No complaints. We like that. <laughs> Give you just a second to catch up with me. Um, obviously, if you want to move on, you can, um, and just you know, pick back up where what you didn't finish a little later. Um, the next step we're going to do is this tree right here. Let me show you this. We'll be doing this tree here, and um, when we do these uh, vines, you can choose. Uh, do you want the vine to go on top of the tree there? Then you would want to do the brown underneath. Um, or you could have the vine go on top over here. Again, you'd do the tree underneath. So we'll do, we're going to do this tree, this branch, and then this branch that Mr. Sloth, he doesn't have a name yet. We definitely need a name for him. I think Sammy the Sloth is a little silly. We've got to come up with something better. So maybe it's a girl sloth. Maybe it's Susan or Samantha. All right, I'm going to use color number two. It's called Coffee Bean. It's the only brown you've got in your palette. Now, um, this brown does show a lot of brush strokes, and I like that. I think by having the brush strokes on there, it makes it look more like wood grain. You know how wood um, has a lot of sort of pattern to it. Uh, your tree branches are rarely just all one brown. So don't worry too much about it leaving brush strokes. We're going to paint carefully around. I'll get my little brush in a minute and we'll paint carefully around these little leaves here.
but you can leave if you want to. Let me get a big open space here. Um, you know, you can do like little dabs like this so it really, really leaves um, a brush stroke look to it. I would recommend keeping your brush strokes all going straight up and down. I think if you go this way, it looks kind of odd. Um, but you know what? That's that's for you to decide. If you want to have um, a pattern on the tree that goes horizontally instead of vertically, that is up to you as well. Now you could, you know, I said don't go sideways, but you could, you know, to get your straight line there, um, use the end of the brush like that and get your line the way you want it and then smooth it out. While the paint's still wet, you can do a lot of different things with it. All right. Um, now I'm going to switch to my little brush. Woo, throwing paint water around here. That's why we wear aprons. <laughs> and I hope you all are wearing old shirts or something like that so you don't have to worry about it. So get your, goodness, that man up there is stomping on my roof. Get your tiny brush. You can't hear it. Oh, they can't hear no. it? Okay, good. And we'll do the little tiny design, the little bit of wood that's in between these, the fronds on this. And then I'm going to sort of smooth it out. You know, if it leaves a little too much brush stroke, just smooth it out a little bit. Nope. <laughs> I braced my wrist on my tree and wiped out some of the paint. That's not good. This might be a good time for you to blow dry if you need to. There we go. You can always fix it while the paint is still wet. Um, and then so I don't do that again, I'm going to turn my canvas a little bit. Um, so that when I go to brace my wrist, I'm up here instead of down on the brown tree. I've got this branch that's going off this way. And y'all, this was another design um, that we created ourselves. And I just love this little sloth. I think he looks very happy. Now, I didn't add any flowers um, to this design, um, but you know, I know vines sometimes are floral vines, so, you know, after we get done with all this, I like that little bit of brush strokes there, um, you could definitely add some flowers um, to your leaves, to your vines, anything you like. Um, so that's all for this branch here. I'm going to go upside down now so I can reach it better. Switch back to my larger, my, well, my medium-sized brush. And we're going to do this vine, or branch, I should say. A branch that um, Miss, Miss Sloth is resting on, or hanging from. You may notice that sometimes when I'm painting with a brush like this, I'll brush along for a while and then I'll turn my brush over. And that's because there's usually a lot more paint on the other side. All right. I'm going to switch now. We'll get down back to our little brush. And see this foot that's right above his knee? We're going to get around him, around those little claws. We'll do those in black ladies later, so if you don't get exactly around them, that's okay. It'll cover up. And then there's just a little bit of brown. Here, I'll turn it right side up so you can see it. 
just a little bit of brown right there between his knee and the edge of his claw. And then we're going to get um, up into the area near these claws. And then we'll go on up here. I'm going to stay with this tiny brush so that I can go all the way up to this pointed end. Remember, if you get a big clump of paint, just pull it up. If you still have too much paint on your brush, you can um, dry that brush off a little bit and then spread out that paint. You can use the side of this smaller brush to spread it out if you want. There we go. I think we've got a good couple of branches here. And I noticed I stuck my arm in this paint again right there. So we'll touch it up. All right. The next color we're going to go on to, if you're ready to move on with me, is uh, this medium green. It's color number three. So this background is your color number one. Color number three is this kind of light, um, it's called sprout green. And we're going to do the sides of these two leaves and all of this little fern here. And then we'll use the darker green, color number four, to do our accents. So we'll start with um, medium brush on color number um, three and we're just going to do the side of this leaf and go ahead and paint right over those lines. It's okay. This color is fairly light. They're going to show through. And this color may be one of those um, that's very sheer. And so you may want to add a second coat to this later on, depending on how you like it. Um, then we're also going to do this side of this leaf. We're doing the leaves that have the little stripies on them, okay? There we go. right up under his armpit, fill in that leaf. And again, you could always switch down to your smaller brush. I'm going to do that now because um, I didn't get the line along his body very well. There we go. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and paint these. Um, the I think he's a fern. I drew him, so I guess I can decide what plant he is. I don't know if that's how botany works, but I think, <laughs> will, I think we'll all forgive you. Well, since I don't know that these kind of plants actually exist, they just existed in my little artist brain. It's if kind any of, of you are aspiring botanists, feel free to look up real plants and paint those instead of uh, Miss Lori's faux plants. Oh, come on. <laughs> My faux plants are fabulous faux they plants. They are fabulous, but if anyone is hurt by the inaccuracies, you are welcome That's to true. your own realistic plants. I did look, and, and sloths do like to live in areas, sort of jungly like areas. Lots of leaves to numb off. Yes, they don't like out like dry savannas or anything like that. Take this color right up into our tree. And we are going to do some accenting with um, our darker green later, which will give us a little bit better defining of these vines. And you do want to take that paint right up in between his claws there, okay? Because he's got his hand sitting down on that plant. So you want to be able to see all of it there. 
I'm just going to soften up some of that extra brush strokes there. All right. We didn't use very much of that light green. Let's see. Next up is color number four. That is our darker green. And uh, we're going to use this color for a lot of accenting. Um, but I'm, what I'm going to have you do is paint these two leaves. And then we're going to go up here and do these vines. We'll do some accenting on these leaves later. But I would like that um, color number three to dry a little bit better before then. So um, we're just going to go ahead and do the parts that are not on top of other colors of paint. These are sort of uh, bi-colored leaves, aren't they? I don't know if there are any leaves that actually do this. But I thought it was a little boring to just leave them all one color. All right, I'm getting a little awkward here, so it's time to turn. I know I looked it up and I but I've forgotten. Oops, oops, wait. <laughs> I was about to create an echo. Sorry guys. What were you saying? I looked it up once, but now I've forgotten where are sloths actually from. Um, Quick Google everybody. Give me just a moment. I wanted to say there were some in Australia. to reach that, I guess right here. Central and South America. Oh, okay. So the same areas that maybe some of our, um, when we did uh, the alpaca in a different class, um, it was also from South America. Usually like northern South America, like north of the Amazon. Right oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, now I'm going to keep using the same number four green. I'm using my small brush with a small amount of paint. Bracing my wrist. That way as I brace my wrist, I can just kind of pivot my hand. Fun fact, the reason that sloths are slow is because they have such a slow metabolic rate, which is how they process food um, and energy. And they move about 41 yards a day, which is less than half the length of a football field. So they are definitely slow. That's not just a joke or stereotype. My line there got a little crazy. And y'all, if your vines get a little fat, that's okay. The vines can be, in, and again, here's where you could go over this tree branch with your vine, or you could go under it. I think I'm going to go over this one right here, and I went under the big one. And remember, if you want to go back later and add some flowers, you can do that too. Now I'm going to turn and go for this vine right here. I guess sloths don't really go swinging through the jungle on vines, do they? That seems to be monkeys. Seems like a lot more effort than It would be a lot more effort. 
I am kind of planning this weekend to be a little bit sloth like because it's Memorial Day weekend. And we will be closed on Monday, Sunday and Monday, but back open up on Tuesday. All right, and then I'm going to turn one more time. Miss Sloth is now completely upside down, and I'll start tracing this, doing the line. Now, you all have probably learned if you use the very tip point of your brush, you get a finer line. If you lay your brush down more sideways, you get a fatter line, so you could kind of almost fill the whole vine. Just really depends on what you're going for. If you want precise, detailed lines, or, oh, I missed a spot there. Or if you want to cover up quickly, um, you can just press down with the side like that, and it'll cover a little more. And then if it leaves a stroke there, just kind of brush it out. Now, if these, uh, my vines have some brush strokes to them, I'm going to leave those because I kind of like that look. You know, a vine isn't just a solid green color. It's got a lot of variation to it. All right. Are we looking good? I think we're looking a lot like our example. Now, I know I did say we were going to do some more accents with the darker green. I'm going to wait and do those as these leaves dry up a little better. Um, I see a point where I stuck my finger in that paint. Time to brush that out. All right. Do you mind to do just a bit of a summary of the last few things you've done for anyone who's running a little behind? Yes. Yes. We started with all our backgrounds. Got all those painted in. I do see some areas where mine is going to need some touching up, but we'll wait until the end. It's a good, it's good to let your paint get really good and dry before you put a second coat on. Then we did the brown trunk and this branch off the trunk of the tree. We also painted this branch that the sloth is actually hanging from. Those were both with color two, the brown. Then we used color three and painted the sides that have the little hash marks on them. We did the, the left side of both leaves, and then we did this fern also with that light green. We're going to do some more accents to them, but we'll do that later when the green's dried. Then we switched to color four, which is our very darkest green, and we did the other half of each leaf, and we did our vines there. Then it's time to start painting. Did we decide her name? Sharon Sloth? Susan Sloth? I like Sammy because it can be gender neutral. It That's be true. It could be Samantha or Samuel. So make sure you come up with a name for that sloth. Now I'm going to start painting the sloth himself. You're moving on to color number five. Uh, this color is called Periwinkle. It's um, Some people might call it what do they call it, blurple, when it's kind of half blue, half purple. Um, and then, but it's color number five, and we're just going to do his whole body. Paint my line there, and then fill in. And you know, if you don't get your borders between two colors perfectly when you perfect when you start, you can always go back later with your tiny paintbrush and outline things. That's a good way to fill in any of these little bits of white. You know, sometimes you end up seeing a little bit of white between the two colors where you didn't uh, bring the paint up close enough to the edge. We'll just get his whole body done here. This periwinkle is a beautiful color and it covers really, really well. I think you'll notice. And 
and we will do some accenting later because we kind of lose his definition. We, we lose um, the lines of where his arms uh, connect to his body and things like that. So we will go back later with um, some of our lighter colors and add some detail work to him. So don't worry if he starts looking a little bit like a big blob. Okay, I'm getting close to the edge, but not right up to it because I'm going to need to fix that with my smaller brush later. Let's see, let's flip him around and then I can go back and just get right into the edge there. I want to make sure I get right up to that light green because I don't want to leave a big clump of color between the two. Now here's where it may get a little confusing for you, um, and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna switch to the smaller brush as I show this to you. The body and the outer rim of the face are all one color, so you have a line right here, and this line is gonna disappear as you paint it with the periwinkle. But that's okay. We're gonna go back and add that color with uh, a little accenting at the end. So don't worry about it. You're just going to paint right over that first line and it won't, it'll disappear under the periwinkle but that's okay. Later when we add the accenting we'll just be following the curve of his face. So that'll be easy to do. Now you're using your tiny brush and when you use smaller brushes you want to go at a slower speed. So just take your time. Go very carefully. You can go in with a little tiny bit there. Remember that when you want a really sharp point you just touch the paint you just touch the tip of the brush to your canvas rather than pressing down when you want to fill up more you press down all right let's see I think I'm going to turn sideways and go right in here to make that little curl Again, using the very tip of my brush so it doesn't get too fat. If you get too big with it, you can always go back and swipe it up with a wet Q-tip or a tiny corner of a wet paper towel. Tiny tip there to get into the space. And then we're going to go right on up into this arm. I'm going to stick with the smaller brush just so I can get these lines a little more carefully done. Got some little white spaces there. Don't worry um, if you see some spots that you're missing. You can touch them up now or you can wait and do it at the end. Oh, I did not finish the detail work on his knee over here. Sometimes when you turn your brush, uh, turn your brush, <laughs> sometimes when you turn your canvas, the light shines on it differently and you can see where you've left clumps and that's a good time 
Oh, and yet again, another little spot we need to get. Down here, right around his claws. Use the tip to get those tiny little spots. And then brush out your brush strokes. We are coming along here. Let's use the tiny brush to get in. This is one of his feet. You know, he's kind of um, wrapped that. Uh, you can't see his other bottom leg. He's wrapped it around the branch there. There we go. And then let's get this little top part of his arm. This periwinkle color covers up so nicely. We are not going to need a second coat, I don't think. Got him right back up there. Now you see he's kind of, his face has gotten lost, where his belly goes has gotten lost, but that's okay. We're going to add some little accenting marks um, when we get near the end, so that'll make it much easier to see. Now, one more thing we've got to do, we've got to do the little mask on his face. So we, again, use our pointy brush, and we kind of just do the mask. Now, don't worry about this dot in the center. Just paint right over it. So we're going to do our wrong end of the paintbrush trick, and that will make a perfect little dot there. And I'll help you guys remember where that spot was. So you know how to put it on there. Woo! He's masked now. He can go to Target. He can go to Target. He's wearing his mask. <laughs> All right. How's everybody doing? I'm not hearing any complaints, so I guess we're doing well. Okay. Um, now we're going to switch to one, two, three, four, five. Color number six, which is this lovely pale purple. It's called Wisteria. And it's a really good, I think, match up to this periwinkle that we've been using. And we're going to fill in his face. It covers pretty well, not quite as nicely as the periwinkle. and get in between his face. Now if you go over the lines a little bit where his face is there, you know, where his nose and mouth are, that's okay. Um, because we're doing that with black at the end and you know how well black covers. It just looks a whole lot better. I feel like I'm painting a little mustache there. Right up here, between the mask and the edge of his face. Uh-oh. I, my paint was still just a little bit wet there. Melissa, could you get me a Q-tip? I'm making a mess. Where are they? Uh, they should be over near the blow dryer. Yes. <laughs> Y'all stop and blow dry because Miss Lori didn't and she ended up with a mess here. Q-tips are great. You just swipe it up like that. There we go. Then I'll go back, wash out my brush, and I think we should be good.
Yeah, I'm thinking this um, this wisteria, as pretty as it is, is a little brush strokey. So I'm going to go back at the end after you all are gone and touch him up a little bit. Just to give him a little more color there. Now, if you did like I did and you took your periwinkle on this um, mask a little too close to the edge, you might want to just um, add a little border of wisteria between the end of the mask and the edge of the face, so like right here. I'm getting very messy here today. I think I'm just going too fast. Now, this is where we're going to use this tiny little brush and just a little bit of paint and start giving our little guy um, some detail, okay? Like the crease, we're going to use just a little bit of paint on the tip and we don't want to um, press down hard. We're just going to do a very light line. So I'm going to use this and just give a little bit of an outline to his face. And I'm going to come right down here. All right, and then as I come down here, I'm going to outline his face. So I'm going to stay the same distance away from the lighter part of his face and just make that circle complete. All right, so I'm going to start here and just make my circle. See how I'm kind of keeping it the same distance away? There we go. So now, he's got a little defi more definition to his head. So what we want to do now is build a little more definition to where his arms are. So we're going to kind of show where he's, we're just going to do a little bit right there. Kind of give that shoulder a little definition. Then we're going to come up from his armpit like that. And see how that makes his arm look less like just a straight slab. We're going to do the same thing over here. Um, we're going to bring this arm up kind of like that. And then we want to make his belly look a little bit chubby. So we're going to come right down like that. And then we're going to follow this line right there. So that just gave, and we're going to connect those two together. We'll just outline his belly a little bit. And that just gave a little more definition. Um, to where his legs are, and to where his arms are, and to where his belly is. All right. Let's clean up that brush. And I think our green um, is dry enough that you can add another, um, add your details to it. Now, um, you might want to add another coat to this green if it feels very thin and sheer to you. Um, if not, or if you want to pause and do that and then come back, um, I'm going to add some little designs. First, I'm going to use this number four, the darker green, to make just a light outline. And then see where my lines were? Just a light amount of paint, just like that. And we'll do the same thing over here. All right, now, um, my, um, I noticed the line on my leaf was getting kind of wobbly here. So this is, remember I was telling you, if you can go back and make a nice, just outline something with color, and that'll make your uh, edges a little smoother. 
kind of like that and then you know when you see a little white spot like I've got a little bit of white here I'm just going to bring the color up to it and I think right here as well but yours is going to look different than mine you patch up what you want to patch up now I'm going to also do some outlining on this fern but I'm going to do it much much more lightly I don't want it as heavy as on that one so I'm going to use just a tiny amount of paint and I'm just going to lightly touch it to the edge there and just kind of follow the contours of that plant go over those lines so that you kind of have the definition you know you can see where each frond goes and just follow your lines there you could shade them a little bit if you wanted to there you go um, you could if you wanted to at this point I didn't do it in my sample but you could always add um, go back with the lighter green and just add a little shading to the underside of your vine there if you wanted. Just gives a little more three-dimensional look to your vine. Now, I get, you get a little too much paint on there, so go back and brush the paint off your brush and just smooth it down. And that's an option. That's something you could do that gives a little more dimension um, to your vine. So here's where we are, folks. We've added the accents to the green leaves, and we uh, I added just a tiny bit of dimension to that vine if I wanted to. We've done the accenting on, uh, with the lighter purple, we've put some little accenting marks around um, our little face there. Now, um, you've got two options here. Um, you can, uh, we're gonna do his claws, and you could either uh, pull out your black marker and do that, or you can do it with the fine point of your brush. I'm going to use the fine point of my brush to do it. Just very carefully. And just do one at a time. Claws have really pointy, sharp claws, and I don't know if they do these, if they use these to defend themselves, you know, because they are so slow. They can only fight themselves because only only other sloths are slow enough for them to engage in battles. Oh, okay. I just made that up. That's oh. not actual. Oh, Melissa, quit making up stories. Well, you know, you want to know. Sometimes when animals have big claws like this, it's for digging. Maybe it's for hanging on to the tree branches. I'm going to have to look that up when I'm done. You don't know this, but in my former life, I, was, I got a degree in marine biology. So I took lots of biology classes and zoology classes and I love learning about animals. I'm going to turn it upside well, down. Her life, she means back when she was in college when the dinosaurs were there. Oh, be quiet, Melissa. <laughs> Not that long she ago. Gets, I guess. She only gets away with that cuz she's my daughter. And because she's coming in here and so nicely helping me with this. All right, there's his little claws. Now, um, I need a little white paint. Um, if you feel like your claws don't have enough definition from one another, um, once this is super dry, thank you, Melissa, um, you could go back. I'm not going to do it here because I would smear the paint since it's still um, wet, but you could take just a tiny bit of white paint and see, I'll do a little line here. You could just do it like right between the claws. Just the tiniest touch of it. You don't want a big, heavy amount. 
All right, then we need to, um, I'm gonna use my black paint and the tip of my brush to fill in his really cute little nose. Like that. But I'm not gonna try to fill in his mouth because I think that's gonna get too hard for me. So we've got our black markers and we can just fill that in like that. And y'all, mine definitely, my face definitely needs a little more of that wisteria. So you may want to add that after we're all done. And you know, if you work on this for a while and you get tired and you want to run off and do something else and let everything dry, uh, cover up your paints, close them all up, put your brushes in the water so they stay nice and safe. Um, and then come back to it later and say, hmm, I really think I need to fix that spot right there. Uh, I think artists do that, you know, who, who paint um, valuable paintings that they sell. They come back to something later on. All right. Last but not least, can you believe we are getting done here? And it's been just over an hour. Um, take your bigger brush, the biggest brush you have. And we're doing that wrong end of the paintbrush trick. And we're going to work on his eyes. Dip it in your white paint. And then kind of in the center of this, um, the fat end, just give him a white dot there and a white dot there. Now, you will probably want to wait. Go blow dry this or um, uh, just let it dry. Um, because sometimes it'll smear if you don't, and then pull out your smallest brush and dip it in the black, just the tiniest dot, and then look in here carefully. Don't even press down all the way. Just press down part way and put the tiniest little black dot in the middle. And look how he suddenly, his face just kind of wakes up because he has eyeballs. So, you all, that is it for our sloth painting, and that is it for this series of canvas glasses. Uh, right now, I have lots of summer camps up for you guys to sign up, both virtual ones, and hopefully in July we'll be opening up for our regular camps. Um, and be patient with us as we come up with some more designs. We'll post those. We'll tell you on Facebook and Instagram that they're ready, and uh, we'll get you signed up if you'd like to. Thank you so much for joining us. You have no idea how much this means to us during this time. Um, and thanks, everybody, and have a great afternoon.